So hello everyone and thank you for taking the time to join us on today's webinar. I see more and more people are uh, entering the session so we'll wait another two or three minutes to let everyone uh, get in and then we'll start. Thank you for understanding. Hello everyone again and thank you again for joining uh, our session today, the webinar today. People are still uh, entering the session, but uh, we'll start. Uh, my name is Ari Krokach. I'm from uh, Unitronics, the UniCloud uh, team. And uh, sorry for that. Um, this comes from UniCloud team, and we will discuss today about uh, how to avoid or how to better manage uh, operational bottlenecks using the UniCloud platforms. Uh, any questions is more than welcome. Uh, there is a Q&A session at the end, uh, but please, if you have say, uh, your questions, please uh, write it down in the question tool of uh, GoToWebinar. So let's start. So we are going to cover today in a brief, short brief, what is UniCloud? I'm sure most of you already know what is UniCloud. Uh, how to identify uh, operation bottleneck uh, causes, uh, how to map them, and what do we need to do to in order to avoid or better manage those bottlenecks? And of course, uh, a Q&A at the end. And of course, as I said before, we can, I will try to answer uh, all your questions also in the middle of uh, the session if you will write them in the questions tools. So what is UniCloud? UniCloud is a secure end-to-end -end IIoT cloud platform that provides centralized assets, assets are machine. So it provides centralized asset management and advanced business, advanced business tools for machine builders. UniCloud's uh, added value uh, for your business uh, can add value for your business by increasing operation efficiency, uh, reduce cost, uh, enable uh, new business models and opportunities, help you make financial and operation decisions that are based on uh, data, data, machine data, discover hidden business insights, and more. With UniCloud, you can easily connect any type of PLC, if you speak Modbus and smart devices from multiple vendors, allow you to access and visual all your connected assets in one place. 
Unicloud basically also collect uh, and aggregate all your telemetry data from your machine. They, it's been stored on the cloud. And then you can perform, for example, on-the-fly calculation to display it on your dashboard or to send it uh, in reports that you want to send to yourself. You can also generate and send automatic reports, receive alerts via SMS or email, and access analytics and statistics data for your assets. It's designed to be easy to use. Uh, if you have some experience, you probably know that creating or building a customized, a customized dashboard is based on drag and drop. It's very easy to use and it requires no coding. So uh, Unicloud also enable a machine builder to set up and manage the connected asset independently without any need for IoT support. So this is in a brief shell uh, uh, Uniclouds. Uh, I showed uh, two, I'm showing over here basically two slides about the Uniclouds because I think that it's better to explain it while you split it into two types of tools. The first tools, set of tools is basically uh, targeting or uh, for a service or maintenance teams. Uh, with remote access, secured remote access, with auto alerts, notification. You don't need any logistic. Uh, you don't need any fixed IP on the other side and you see all the information in one place for all the machines. You can use it to do trend analysis. You can visualize it. Uh, you can enable new business models uh, like uh, pay per use. Okay, so instead of just selling your machines, if you are a machine builder, you also can rent. Uh, you rent, uh, basically you sell service of a machine and not the machine itself. So you have accessibility for audience or customers that couldn't afford your machine before by uh, offering services. So what are, what are uh, work bottlenecks? Okay, so we need to agree on the definition before we go and speak about them. So working bottlenecks are a point that slows down or prevent the flow of your work. Again, a bottleneck is a point that slows down or prevent or prevent the flow of work. So after we agree on the definition, let's meet Sam. So say hello to Sam. Sam is a service manager at a water treatment company. Uh, in his job, uh, Sam communicate and coordinate with various parties, starting from customer schedule and unscheduled tasks, like, tasks like SMS calls, my machine is not working, and so on. And internally with his warehouse, uh, service team, accounting to invoice the customer for services, uh, the manufacturer department, of course, is, uh, is uh, management. Every day, some face bottlenecks caused by a variety of uh, factors, such as less of lack of resources, poor communication and coordination. However, the main factor causing some plans to change are those calls, SOS or emergency calls, from customer reporting on a problem with their machines that prevents them from using their machines as expected. Uh, today, when some receive such a call, some must begin investigating and gathering data to determine the root cause of the problem and how he can resolve it as soon as possible. This time-consuming process sometimes results with a missing or an unclear uh, information. He could have uh, solved the problem faster if he could have accessed the customer machine and starting troubleshooting the problem without relying on others with direct access to machine data, including historical data. Uh, so basically you can use the historical data and the real data to overlap different factors to understand the, chain, the cause of the problem. Furthermore, if Sam could have prevented the machine from reaching the po this point of breaking, okay, let's define this uh, point as breaking, the point that the customer is calling you and said, the machine uh, is down, I cannot uh, continue to work. 
if he could uh, basically prevent the machine to reach that point, he could have avoid receiving these calls and avoiding these bottlenecks, which may also, of course, affect other customers and other departments at this company. So uh, it's a very stressy job for uh, Sam, but there are some uh, bottlenecks that basically can turn his day around and uh, push all our daily agenda to, to, to very significantly. So let's zoom out a bit from some uh, department and let's speak on the company, a company called Water Apotheker. It's a manufacturer of water treating solution that reduce uh, water contamination. Uh, this company operates globally by selling and renting their system with a two-year warranty that includes maintenance, 24-7 support, and parts. And due to their geographic location and lack of resources, they are struggling to maintain quality of service. Quality of service can relate to many, many factors. They are struggling to reduce those SOS calls, unscheduled activities, emergency calls from customers, to maintain high machine uptime. Uh, machine uptime on customer side, if, uh, just to clarify the definition of machine uptime. Machine uptime definition is that if uh, your machine needs to work by definition seven hours a day at the customer site, and it's not able to uh, perform seven hours a day because of machine issues, parts issues, labor issues, uh, material issues. Uh, uh, so it cannot basically, uh, it's uptime, it's not uh, optimal. Some of these uh, factors that affect the uptime relate to the machine itself. If you can maintain high machine uptime on customer side, basically um, you basically increase the level of customer satisfaction. If you can maintain this uh, high level of uptime, uh, uptime machine uptime, basically you can lower your service cost. And you, of course, as I said, you basically maintain high level of customer satisfaction. And of course, also uh, your competitive uh, advantage on other machine builders in your area in the same field that you are uh, building your machines. So uh, what are we taking facing those uh, struggling to uh, achieve all these uh, targets? Therefore, they have made a decision to invest in a technology that will improve the quality of their machines while also increasing service productivity and efficiency. So what they did, they mapped all the areas where they now have difficulties and bottlenecks. And after they did it, uh, they found that providing services on site caused by unexpected machine shutdown and a lack of knowledge about the actual condition of their machines at all time, regardless of its geographic location, has a major impact on their operation. So basically what they did, they lay out uh, some business goals and therefore they have decided to connect all their machines to the internet and save their data and use their data uh, on one central cloud platform. These are the operational bottlenecks they have identified along with the extra business goal they have laid out. So the first one is they need to know at all time, the actual machine condition and status. Today, because they don't know, they get all these uh, emergency calls, they have a maintenance contracts, they need to go there, uh, they are facing lack of, lack of resources because their staff is scheduled to go uh, in a different way to a different location or do some other tasks. So basically, if they know at all times what is the actual condition, they can prevent reach to a point that they will get those uh, those calls from the customers. 
They want, of course, to increase the machine uptime from 90% uh, to 95. However, it's not a bottleneck. It was not defined and mapped as a bottleneck. One of the other bottlenecks they identify is the streamline of communication inside the company and with the, with the, with the customer. Uh, in certain cases, an alert reached out to the company and it didn't, this information didn't flow to the specific people who needs to de deal with this uh, information and uh, basically it slowed down the troubleshooting and also affect the logistic proce process of, uh, of solving the information. I'll show you how to improve this with UniCloud in a minute. They want also to reduce uh, the troubleshooting by 30%. Today, troubleshooting uh, is too long for them. All those sessions take too much time. They want to reduce it because they want to uh, use, do a better use with their staff. Uh, in order to do that, they decided to invest in some technology that will give them access to information to do troubleshooting faster, easier, uh, without relying on anyone else, uh, which is an external, uh, uh, which is an external to the to the company. Another bottleneck they have decided they have identified is they want to reduce their service time uh, on site. Uh, they want to do more remote sessions. They don't want to send any more, uh, like they're sending today uh, their stuff to to customer site. Uh, it's lead to, again, to lack of resources in terms of uh, service engineers and so on. They identify this as a bottleneck. They want to reduce travels and service costs by 30%. So if they can uh, uh, achieve uh, to improve uh, number five, to reduce those service on time, they can basically achieve also goal number six, which is a business goal, not uh, operational goal. They want also to cut service costs by 30% during machine warranty period. So if you remember a few minutes ago, I told you that this company give a two year warranty uh, to their machines on site and they basically take on themselves all the expenses, traveling, uh, parts and so on. And if they can, again, be aware Look at number one, if they can be aware remotely on the actual machine condition at all time and prevent the machine to reach to a point they need to urgently service it on site, they can basically uh, cut cost of uh, doing machine warranty uh, period. And the last one, they want to use preventing maintenance as the main service strategy, uh, preventing maintenance, uh, what is called CBM, which stands for uh, condition-based monitoring versus uh, plan maintenance, which we all familiar from today. So today you say you sell a machine and you say, okay, once in six months, you need to go through maintenance uh, treatment, regardless if the machine needs the treatment, the service or not. Uh, CBM, uh, condition-based monitoring, is based on continu continuously monitoring the machine. Uh, it's a type of maintenance strategy that involves regularly monitoring the, monitoring the condition of the equipment or machinery in order to identify potential problems before they came serious. Uh, how it's been done, this is typically done using sensors or other type of monitoring equipment. equipment which collect data on various aspects of the equipment performance. And then this data can be analyzed and to identify trends or patterns and maybe indicate also on a problem. In simple words, uh, CBM, it's a service strategy that serves the machine only when it's needed to be serviced. Okay, and not on a periodic uh, level. We are not going to touch this uh, anymore at this session. We're going to maybe talk about this uh, uh, more in, uh, in more details on another session, but uh, if you can connect your machine, goal number one, and be aware of the machine condition at any status and at any time, uh, you can basically also implement uh, CBM as an additional uh, service strategy or even in the main, as a main strategy. 
So if you look on the, on the bottlenecks that uh, uh, Water Apotheker mapped, they are all relate to connectivity and machine data. Without connecting your machines, without having uh, the data sent to a cloud, saving the data, being use the, uh, the data to send you alert, use the data to do some uh, analytics, statistics, identify trends, you will not be able to release or better manage those bottlenecks. Okay, so the first step that people need to do is to connect the machine to the internet. Connect the machine to the internet, to a cloud platform, uh, hopefully uh, UniCloud, because we are from Unitronics. And this is the first step to understand how what is actual machine status uh, regardless of the geographic location. So let's speak about uh, bottleneck number one, concept knowledge of machine actual condition and status. So basically by connecting, and it's very, very easy to connect today a machine to the internet. You just need a router or you need a, a direct Ethernet connection to, to the PLC, to the controller. Uh, and to open an account in UniCloud takes a minute. Uh, basically, if you can connect it, you move from a point-to-point -point or uh, asset management or machine management to a global centralized uh, machine management. You don't need anymore to, uh, to search for the, if you have, for example, 10 machines like we see over here, and we see that nine of them are connected and one has a critical alert over here, uh, you don't anymore to make any phone call. You have this on your screenshot, on, on your dashboard, uh, you have the information of which machine is uh, has the problem and so on and so on. Let me show you how it's look like on the live. Uh, UniCloud. So this is UniCloud platform. I don't know if everyone knows. This is our public demo. Uh, I'll give you the uh, the user and password how to log into this demo. It's a read-only mode. You cannot uh, corrupt it or change it. So you can play with it and understand the functionality of UniCloud. So over here we have a structure of a machine builder, one of his uh, distribution channel, and a customer that bought the machine from uh, this customer, this channel. So let us uh, enter the dashboard of the machine builder. And now we see basically an asset management mode where this machine builder have 10 machines. Eight of them are connected. This is a real life demo, real information. One has a communication error, one has a critical alert. You can see all the details, which one has the critical alarm issue, which one has communication. We can also set up over here, or maybe on the maintenance dashboard, we can set up some uh, service rules behind this widget window. So for example, uh, if the temperature of your asset, of your machine is more than 50 degrees, I want to get an SMS and I want to know over here that uh, it's above 50 degrees because this is what I defined behind this window. Or for example, if I know that those machines of mine need to be maintained after 7,000 working hours, I know that these three machines pass the 7,000 and I need to basically, um, I need basically to, they are due to maintenance, I need basically to plan for their maintenance. So in a snapshot, you have all the information, also statistic information, analytic information, you can compare machines, you can compare uh, two machine performance, you can see the values, analytics, and of course, if you want to drill down uh, to a specific machine, so let's try to drill down to 520. So this is a more detailed uh, dashboard of asset number 520. I see all the telemetry. If it's reading the telemetry every five minutes, each line is one uh, every five minutes. I can download it manually, but I don't really need to download because I can set up an automatic report that will be sent to me on the daily basic, hourly basic, and so on. I have a red background over here. 
this machine is above, above 50 degrees, and I can go through a remote access mode, or I can do also some uh, control on the machine itself remotely. I can shut it down, or after a service, I need to reset the working hours uh, to change this to zero, I can do it as well. So basically, all this, this information is in the palm of your hand. You just need to connect the machines to the internet and let UniCloud start collecting the data. All those uh, insights, uh, hidden uh, information, business opportunity, uh, better service uh, will come. Okay, so if the data is here, basically you will be able to use the data in order to enhance the way you work. So back to our uh, presentation. So again, bottleneck number one is to be aware of, in any time, of the actual uh, machine status. And what I showed you is exactly what it is. If I'm aware, I can maybe prevent the machines. Remember Sam with the bottleneck and his emergency calls? If I'm aware that the machine, the pump, is over 50 degrees, I can already start treating this situation, make all parties aware, do my magic and avoid this customer call. And if I can avoid this customer call, I can plan ahead, I can go ahead with my planning for, for the day. Any questions uh, until now? If you have, please, uh, please write it down in the questions uh, too. So while you are, uh, Writing down your question, let's move to goal number two. So if you remember, Sam wanted or Water Apotheke identified that uh, information is streamlined, uh, is not optimal in the organization. Someone gets a telephone from the customer, then he goes to eat something, and after half an hour he comes back, everything is delayed. Uh, so it becomes a bottleneck until everyone uh, collect all the information. Uh, until there is no misunderstanding what is the actual status and they can also uh, start planning for the steps they want to do in order to to resolve this. So basically uh, what you can do with UniCloud, you can uh, create what we call events, which is our automatic, event, automatic notifications, uh, which can be sent by SMS or email for alarm reports. For example, if you want to uh, if you want to uh, measure or to get an indication of a higher or lower temperature, uh, pressure, vibration, uh, high or too low tank levels, uh, you can use this. And also you can basically uh, create one uh, for each uh, notification. Uh, you can assign different recipients. So if, for example, my pump is above 50 degrees and someone needs to take care of it because this is the service agreement that I have with my customer, I can send it to my service manager, I can send it to my customer service personnel on the ground, I can send it to whoever I want. It's only about uh, adding another email. And when this notification will be sent, everyone will be aware of the issue at the same time. So wheels are starting to turn faster while everyone has the same information. I can also, of course, for this uh, notification, add actually the information itself and not only give a title. If the pressure is too low, I can say asset number one, the pressure is such and such bars. And, uh, and this is too low for this type of machines, please, I can also put whatever I want in the email, please do ABC in order to resolve it. Uh, okay, so this is one way to, to handle a bottleneck of communication. Of course, I can also add the customer uh, for this communication. Goal number four, to reduce troubleshooting time by 30%. You remember if we go back to uh, goal number one, they wanted to be aware of the, of the asset uh, condition at all times. 
if I can basically access the data of those assets, of these assets, I can basically use the data and cross-reference data for a critical troubleshooting without dependency on anyone from outside, on customer feedback, which we don't really know if it's, uh, you know, precise enough on a technical level. So, uh, for example, you can go to the dashboard or you can send it to yourself as a, as a report. So, over here we can see all the telemetry data that can be uh, accessed. We can also uh, use some uh, charts to overlap uh, the information. For example, these charts basically monitor the CO2 footprint. Uh, uh, normal level is up to 1000 ppm, which is somewhere over here. And what we see over here, that there is a pattern over here, that basically the footprint, the CO2 footprint in some cases, in some days, are higher uh, than what is allowed by the regulator. What we see also over here, that the power levels, when the power levels are increasing, it's affecting the CO2 levels. So over here we can cross-reference the different factors in order to already to understand what need to be done or what is the cost problem for the, the violation of the CO2 that uh, was reported uh, on the customer side. Okay, so this is one way to go with troubleshooting using data. You already halfway to to understand what was the cause. If you understand the cause, you can address the the solution faster. And if you can address the solution faster, you're basically uh, troubleshooting session will be shorter. Your company can use you to other tasks, and the stress will be uh, will be uh, lower. The last goal that was mapped by Water Taker is to reduce their service time on site by 40 percent or any percent that you want to put over here. So with UniCloud, uh, you can basically do remote access. Uh, I'm sorry, it's not remote access, it's secured remote access. Uh, the most important thing in UniCloud is security. This is why we have so much, uh, so many layer of security. For example, in order to be able to use a VNC to do remote access as a user, for example, if you are a service engineer, you first of all need to have your uh, user and password. And then the system will send you a 2FA, what we call 2FA, two-factor authentication, or uh, basically will send you a code which you will need to enter. And only then you can log in and enter your dashboard. In addition, the definition of your user should, should include also that you will be able to use VNC for remote access. Otherwise, you will log into the dashboard and this window over here uh, will not be uh, active for you. Okay, so there are many, many levels of security. Another level of security, for example, we spoke about uh, we spoke about automatic notification reports and so on. Uh, when you get a report, you don't get an attachment; you get a link. In order to download it to your uh, local uh, PC, local computer, you need to log into UniCloud, and only when UniCloud understands that you are the relevant people that he sent, and you have the access to or your privilege rights to get this information, only then uh, UniCloud will automatically download the, the report uh, to your uh, local computer. So there is a lot of lot of uh, security. So going back to uh, remote access, we spoke about security. And again, uh, the service uh, team of, uh, of uh, Water Apotheker can basically now securely access the machine remotely with no dependency and perform their duties without leaving the office. Okay, we spoke about uh, reducing traveling cost. We, those, we spoke about uh, accessibility to data, historical data, in order to understand. Uh, basically, it's, uh, it's quite easy. So, if you can achieve those four uh, bottlenecks, it's also 
uh, has an impact on, for example, uh, increased machine reliability from 82 to 95, for example, and then your reputation of your machine is better than your competitors, reduce travel and service costs because you don't need to, you know, go again, you can do a lot of things remotely. Uh, you can cast cost, you can cut cost during machine warranty period because you can monitor the machine. Uh, and actually you can use machine aggregated data to learn how to improve your products. This is a byproduct, number 10, which I think for machine builder, worth a lot of money. A lot of money. When you decide to, for example, to design or manufacture or design a new type or new version of your machine, and you want to be more um, energy uh, uh, consuming, not energy consuming, you want to, that the machine will consume less energy, uh, you can basically use the machine data in order to understand when and how users are using the machine and what kind of uh, level of energy is it using. And if you can basically produce a machine which is cost effective more than your competitor, your machine has, a, and you as a, a machine builder has a, has a better competitor, advantage competitors. Okay, any questions? Okay, I want to show you on the system itself how actually and where are events and how to do remote monitoring and how to do remote access and so on. So we spoke already on asset management mode and you will feel the change immediately when you connect the second PLC to your system, to your uh, unique cloud account. On, if you have only one, it's nice to have, but there is no uh, what you call fleet management over here. As soon as you add two, three, four, a hundred, sometimes uh, uh, it will you will have, have a better uh, better understanding in less time. So event management, basically, we can see four active events or notifications over here. One is let me know when the temperature is uh, reaching 90 degrees, it's based on a telemetry that we get, it's an SMS. Uh, one, I want to be aware of communication lost. Uh, I want to get it on with um, through emails. I want to have a daily report of the status of the machine. And I want to be aware of all the critical alarms that the PLC sent to me. All of those uh, are quite easy to set up. Uh, so let's take one of those. So before we go to the setup and I'll show you how easy it is, I want to touch the recipient. So let's take this one. And basically if I want more than one person, which is in this case myself, to get this SMS or email at the same time, I just need to go and add more people to the same, to the same group. That's how easy it is. Right? So I'm going to remove them because otherwise I'll start to get uh, angry phones from my colleagues. Okay, and let me open one of these. Let's suspend it. And go to the edit. And basically over here, I have a rule uh, mechanism where I can say, let me know when temperature, uh, temperature of pump one is above 90 degrees. I can add more rules using all the tags. Uh, and I can do some, you know, logical, uh, uh, logical uh, 1000, logical uh, arguments over here. I can split them in groups and decide which group will be uh, before, when you consider between those two, a or or an end, and this, the, the next one basically is. Let me just remove this.
The next step would be what kind of information I want to add to the email or SMS, and then I go and create my layout for the SMS. Okay, alert, current type is temperature, so I can basically use uh, different kind of uh, real, real data from the machine. It's a placeholder and the data will be injected over here. And this is basically how it will look like. Okay, so I can even preview the message template. What's nice in those, uh, in those templates is that, that you only need to define the condition over here once. Okay, regardless how many assets, how many machines are connected to your organization. So you can define that you want to get a critical alarm a email as soon as one of the machines get a, into a situation of a critical alarm, and you don't need to define it per PLC that you connect to your UniCloud account. By default, this uh, alarm, this uh, notification will monitor all the machines that are connected to your to your uh, to your account, and of course you can modify, you can suspend it, you can change the condition inside, and immediately it will reflect on all your uh, fleet. Okay. So this is it. Regardless, uh, regarding a remote uh, access session. So let's take five one seven. Go to VNC, for example. And the machine will connect immediately, and I'm I'm basically in. Okay, so it's just like I'm in front of the machine. By the way, for those of you that are uh, uh, dealing also with um, dealing also with the PLC uh, operation system upgrades and application upgrades, uh, if you have UniCloud, you can upgrade you can upgrade application remotely. And you can upgrade also the operation system remotely. If you are not using UniCloud in order to upgrade or upload a different operation system to the PLC, you need to go on site with the USB, with the data on the USB. So again, for those of you that is involved with service, in order to do it remotely and not spend the time of going to a customer site for that, if you have uh, Unilogic side by side with UniCloud, you can do all of that remotely. <clears throat> so I see some questions over here. So one moment. So can an email be sent to a uh, priority until uh, satisfied in case recipient in slow response? I'm not sure I understand uh, periodically. Yes, yes. So I think I understand. So each uh, alarm, each notification over here, so let's take one that is not active, uh, whatever, have what we call, um, okay, so this is not the one that I wanted to use. Here is the one. Okay, we have what we call a latch time. A latch time is uh, is basically um, how long will be, um, how frequent those notification about this occasion will be sent to you. So if, for example, you have a communication loss and you have over here every one uh, minute, if the communication loss is not established again, you will get an email or SMS every one, one minute. This is really not what you wanted to, uh, what uh, it's bothering you because you still didn't, uh, you know, uh, fix the issue. So today's default, I think it's uh, every 30 minutes, but you can modify, uh, you can modify how frequent do you want to get an alert on an existing issue. And as soon as the existing issue will be recovered, uh, you will not get any uh, alerts anymore for this specific issue. Richard, I hope that I understood what you answered, and this is uh, the answer. This is uh, the question for your question. Now let me check another one over here. Yeah. 
Gabriel, did you ask, uh, is your question basically is involved with security in order to uh, decide only for who will get an option, which user will get an option to, to do remote access? Okay, I'll wait for Gabriel to answer. There is another question from Ivaku uh, Mao. Uh, sorry for maybe probably mis mis mispronouncing uh, your uh, your question. In device management, the communication status is showing available instead of connected. Uh, shall you tell how we can clear this issue? Yes. Yeah, so basically, you need to press uh, to press the get telemetry uh, button. So. If we go to devices over here, let's select an asset. Um, I don't have over here an evaluation connected. So basically, you can try to press and use the get telemetry button uh, when you force, actually. So in this case, uh, we get a telemetry every five minutes. If you want to do a test and don't want to wait another five minutes, you need to uh, get a telemetry. Uh, another source to understand the status, you can use the uh, our uh, new help. And by the way, if you are not familiar, we have a self-training tool over here for everyone who doesn't know how to use, uh, how to work and how to build a dashboard and so on. So when you start to use it, for example, how to create a new user, it will guide you step by step what to do what where to press uh, until you succeed with the with the task i'm going to hit the x over here to close it and i don't want to resume it so basically what i wanted to show you is that you can uh, get all the statuses uh, from here uh, probably device status so i'm not sure it's already inside device connection status so in in our uh, in our help uh, you have all the statuses and what do they mean what does it mean available so available is a temporary uh, situ uh, status which signal the configuration of a new asset is completed. It means basically that you connected, but no telemetry was sent. If no telemetry was sent, uh, please use the get telemetry uh, button. And if it's not moving to a connected status, uh, which the device is connected, can be sent data to UniCloud. Uh, let us know, uh, send an email to uh, support at unitronics.com and uh, people over there uh, to help you with uh, with the connectivity so uh okay uh, gabriel franco are you still with us gabriel yes one moment let me read your question Okay, I understand uh, what you just wrote. Uh, so basic, basically, in order to restrict the functionality of remote access, you need to use a privilege rights of a user. So if you go to organization, let us minimize it, and you go to users, and you go to any user, then you enter his email and so on, you define the user. Over here, you can define what will be his privilege access, okay? So one have, have an option to do uh, remote access from the dashboard. One doesn't need to see any information and you want to give him only ability to do remote access from device manager, okay? So if you go to over here, he needs to select the asset and press over here the VNC. 
and a new window will pop up and a connection will be established. So in this way, uh, this guy doesn't have any, any involvement with the data, dashboards, and so on. You can also decide, this is something that was released a few weeks ago in the latest version, that not everyone needs to see all the information. So if you, this is the gateway for your uh, or portal and you want to get to a remote access window. So probably you need to go from that step to that step and then to go over here. And you don't want anyone, everyone to see those, uh, this information on an organ, on a user definition level. Okay, so let's take, uh, I don't know, this guy, I hope he's not going to be angry at me. I can decide what will be the default dashboard of this specific customer, of this specific user. So I can basically restrict from him to see all the information. The only thing that he will be able to do is to reach to a, a, um, a dashboard with a window of VNC and a map, maybe a list of all the assets that he needs to uh, that he wants to to address to log in. So is that answering your uh, question, Gabriel? Okay. Anyone else has uh, has other the questions? Okay. So no more questions. So I want to go back to. Um, the presentation, we are already uh, reaching to the point that we are in the finish of the of the presentation. Um, we answer what was uh, questioned. And I will urge you to basically go to Unitronics IO, log in, sign up, and put your first name, last name, email, company name, invent a company, whatever, and create create basically an account. As soon as you create an account, as soon as you create an account, uh, after we verify that this is, you know, through the email that this is yourself, uh, after two minutes you log in, we inject data, virtual data of two pumps to your uh, organization, to your account. So if you want to experience, to build dashboard, you don't need to connect physically a PLC to your account. You can start using the data that we inject over here. Of course, the next step would be to, to connect your uh, PLC and to see, to go to real life. And if you want to go into the demo that I just showed you, it's a public demo. You can use this uh, information that will be sent to you after the webinar. Uh, it's a read-only mode. You can understand what are the capabilities of this platform. And I'm sure that uh, uh, when we spoke about bottlenecks and how we can automate communication, how can we have all the information immediately in front of us, uh, we can overlap parameters in order to shorten the troubleshooting uh, time. I'm sure basically um, you will, uh, you can apply your own uh, issues on a daily work and try to understand how how to how to resolve it um, there's another question is the webinar recording available yes uh, so it will not be available in an hour but uh, tomorrow the same time uh, maybe tomorrow morning my time uh, I'm in Israel so we'll send a, we'll send an email with a recording uh, together with the recording, we'll set these uh, details, how to use the, the demo. And, uh, and of course, every, any questions that you guys have, uh, you can either uh, write to me, write to our support, or address your uh, local uh, Unitronics distributor. Um, uh, any question, we have also like a form on our website. You can log into our website and so on. Last thing that I want to show you because um, 
maybe some of you, sorry for that. Maybe some of you uh, need some more uh, additional information. You can always go, technical information, I mean, you can also all, always go to unitronics.cloud, which is our website. Over here, you have a detailed uh, information about the security levels and also uh, our ISO certifications and the certificate itself, if you need to provide it to your customers or to your company and all the layers of security that we have. In addition, if you go to uh, getting started over here, you have a technical uh, tools over here, a PDF, uh, which is step-by-step -step instructions, or a movie, how to connect to UniCloud, a Unistream, how to connect the Samba, Jazz, uh, or a vision, or how to connect a third party, a non-unitronics device which speaks Modbus uh, to, to UniCloud. Okay, so UniCloud is not restricted only to be used with the uh, Unitronics PLC. You can use with any small device, any PLC that speaks uh, Modbus. Great. So any other questions? So no, uh, I hope that uh, this webinar was informative and uh, it's, uh, it's a teaser for you to understand what do you want, how do you want to uh, use the system. You are more than welcome to uh, send me an email and maybe I can advise you with specific questions or specific issues or bottlenecks uh, that you have in your organization. And thank you for spending, taking the time to to spend the time with me in the last uh, almost hour, one hour minus four minutes, and I hope you have a great day. And again, we'll send you the we'll send you the recording uh, tomorrow morning my time. Thank you, guys and ladies, and bye bye.